Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group here. It is Monday, April 13th, 2020, roughly a month into the quarantine from coronavirus COVID-19. It is Easter Monday, uh, the day following Easter Sunday. So those of you that celebrated Easter yesterday, I hope you had a great day with your family, uh, either virtually or in person if you were able to. Uh, today is also Thomas Jefferson's birthday. Thomas Jefferson was born April 13th of 1743, uh, so definitely a founding father of the United States. Uh, now moving over into technology, uh, the big news over the weekend, uh, Danish uh, pump maker uh, Desme, uh, it's a worldwide company, uh, suffered a cyber attack Thursday night into Friday. Um, over the weekend, they started powering systems back online and going through their process, their documented procedures on what to do in case of a cyber attack. So it was really great to read that a company has a plan in place of if cyber attack happens, you know, break glass uh, and kind of go through that process. Uh, another interesting piece of news um, is Microsoft bought a domain name. Now, you should probably don't think Microsoft buying a domain name is you know, newsworthy, but in this case, they buy the domain corp.com. And corp.com is an important domain, uh, and it's more technology basis than anything. But looking at corp.com, it was commonly used when setting up domains for internal small businesses, medium, and enterprises. So when you set up a new computer network uh, for an organization, you name it. Um, typically, you name it a domain that the organization owns. Uh, so scottrdavis.com, for example, or techwisegroup.com. Uh, a, a lot of times in today's world, you set it up on a .NET. Uh, so techwisegroup.net, scottrdavis.net could be my internal domain name. Um, but before there was kind of these commonalities, there were really two bases. One I'm going to get into, one I'll just mention, is you know a lot of times we use .local instead of .com, .net. Uh, that has completely been abandoned, um, and if you had a .local, you can actually convert it to a .com or a .net. Uh, but corp.com was kind of a blanket template. Uh, I'm going to name it corp.com because we're a corporation, and a lot of places did that. So why that's important is the domain name that's tied to your internal server infrastructure into your internal network is you know, sitting there and man in the middle attacks could be used to impersonate your domain and actually used to get credentials, used to breach your network, used to do bad things. So by Microsoft buying corp.com, it really puts the domain in good hands. Uh, it also ensures that it's not going to be used in a extremely bad way as far as an attack. Now, if you're using corp.com, I highly recommend talking to your IT department, talking to an IT vendor, uh, and migrating away from corp.com and finding a domain name that you own, that you manage, because really that's the only way you're going to 100% protect yourself. So that's my real recommendation is if you're using corp.com, if you're using a .lcl, a .local, or a domain name you don't own, you need to change it for security reasons. Plain and simple. Talk to someone. Get it changed. Um, Cloudflare has left the reCAPTCHA program. So Google runs reCAPTCHA. reCAPTCHA is the process when you go to log into a website and it indicates choose all the pictures that have a sidewalk or choose all the pictures that has a bus and you choose you know out of these nine images you choose four images you do the hokey pokey turn yourself around and it logs you into the website well for the longest time since google's managed reCAPTCHA it's been free well earlier this year they announced that they're going to start billing for it for at least companies and organizations that are heavily using the reCAPTCHA service at the end of the day it understands because Google is running a server that's running that process and you know there's server processing there's lectures there's expenses that go into managing it uh, so for the heavy users of it um, at least you know Google has announced that they're gonna start charging so uh, that's kind of a preventative nature Cloudflare has switched to HCAPTCHA the exact same technology just being managed somewhere else in this case HCAPTCHA I believe is open source um, the piece of information that I think bothered me the most that I read about over the weekend is 
45% of employees don't know what steps to take after ransomware. Uh, this was put out by Kap Kapersky. And the reason it bothers me is it tells me people aren't educating their end users. So if I was to just sit here and ask you, you know, if you got ransomware and all of a sudden you see all your files are locked, what is the first thing you're going to do? Are you going to shut your computer down? Are you going to pick up the phone? You're probably going through a panic state. You're probably going to reboot your computer. That's most commonly what I see. You're shutting it down. Um, I've seen people unplug the computer. I've seen all sorts of things. But most employees don't know how to handle that. And by shutting it down or unplugging the power cord, you actually could potentially be wiping important log data and information that could be used in a forensics audit to determine if any data was breached from your organization. The best practice in this case is to unplug the network cable or disconnect the Wi-Fi. So that really should be your step one and then communicating to your IT team. But it goes back to a bigger conversation of just education as a whole. And if you're not educating your end users, then you are trusting the weakest link in your entire scope of infrastructure security to an end user that gets a phishing email, call it a COVID-19 news release. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Call it a COVID-19 news release. They click on that, ransomware is in your network because they weren't trained in what phishing emails were, what spear phishing was, what to look for, what is CEO fraud when they wire money outside the organization. So training your employees is crucial, 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 crucial. If you are not training your employees, you really need to reach out to me, scott at techwisegroup.com. We have a number of great training programs from compliance, security, uh, even uh, productivity training options that we have available for you. Uh, scott at techwisegroup.com. I can definitely help point you in the right direction or get you, you know, at least a demo of something. Um, but just to kind of hit home a little bit more, a lot of compliance requirements require cybersecurity training. The New York Shield Act, Massachusetts Data Security Law. Um, GDPR, PCI DSS, an industry compliance for processing credit cards. The list goes on and on and on. If you are not investing the little bit of money that it costs to do end user education, then you are leaving the, the biggest threat to your organization security wide open. Um, it's just plain and simple. It just needs to happen. Um, so, Take my advice, get some education. Even if it's you getting an all hands on meeting for your staff of three people and going over what a phishing email is and how it's done, just we need to do a better job of educating people because 45% of employees that don't know what to do after ransomware, that's not a good statistic at all. And ultimately that's why ransomware is as effective as it is because of the phishing emails, um, but also why so many people are paying the ransoms because we're not doing the proactive stuff up front. And if you're not doing the proactive stuff, you're not doing the reactive stuff. So you're not going to have good backups. So you're going to pay the ransom. Um, the last thing I want to leave you with is just the unexpected weather. Um, obviously today we had a number of strong storms sweep through the Harrisburg area, the Philadelphia area. There's high wind advisories, you know, through today. There's flood warnings. There's, you know, a couple of days ago, high winds. Um, if you're from the Hershey area, the, the popular kissing tower lost a window in the one windstorm. Uh, so, you know, ideally this is the time of the year that we'd be taking the kids to Hershey Park. Uh, unfortunately, with the COVID coronavirus, we're not there yet. But, you know, the winds were powerful enough that it knocked a window out of that. Um, and what I want to bring up is just understanding what your hazard and vulnerabilities are. Uh, is it a pandemic? Is it work from home? Is it um, a drought? Is it active shooters? You know, what is your threat level and to what degree do you have to prepare for it? Uh, I know it's not completely technical aspects, but it is an important business aspect and technology runs business. Um, Kaiser Permanente, K-A-I-S-E-R-P-E-R-M-A-N-E-N-T-E, -E -E -E, 
has a tremendous hazard and vulnerability assessment tool. Uh, it's an Excel document. You download it. It's a free download. Um, you go through. It has a list of like 80 some events, including a zombie attack, which is my favorite. Uh, but what is the probability of it? You know, a zero through a three, so a scale of four. Any alerts that you've recently had? How many times you've activated it? What the impact is? So it really gets you thinking about if this happens, what is the business impact? What is the technology impact? What is the overall risk to the business? And as you're looking back at getting your business restarted, as you're looking back and getting back to work if you're non-essential, um, going through this exercise, taking a couple hours, filling out the Kaiser Permanente is really going to be eye-opening to you in a lot of ways. And it's going to really allow you to put focus and picture into what your threats are and how to ensure that your business can survive if a hazard, a vulnerability, a pandemic, a disaster actually happen. So take a look at it. If you are having trouble finding it, go to scottrdavis.com. I do have a download link for it on there. Um, again, that's Kaiser Promonte, the hazard and vulnerability assessment tool. Ugh, I hate allergy season. I swear to God, I do not have coronavirus. Uh, I haven't been tested, but I not having any have it. I have not had any fevers. We've been testing ourselves, testing our kids. Um, we've been doing every precaution as essential employees. So I do not have that. I know. And every spring, my allergies flare up. I get the cough. But anyways, Kaiser Permanente. Definitely look it up. Find it. Download the Excel. Take a couple of hours and go through the exercise. Um, and train your employees. Just please train your employees. I don't care how you do it, what tools you use. If you want to talk about some tools that TechWise Group has partnered with, give me a call. Um, shoot me an email, scott at techwisegroup.com. Have yourself a great Monday, everybody.